Unike Yesu Kristo mu buzima bwawe akubera umwana. Yazanye no kugira ngo uronke ubugingo kandi uburonke busagutse. Bamwijambo riza no buzima ubuzima bwawe bubeho ubuhinduka. Praise the Lord. Amen. Do you have your Bibles with you? Come on, raise that Bible up in the Do, air. Say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I cannot hear you say, this is the incorruptible word of God. Sharper than any two-double-edged sword. Come on, say it, say it, say it, say it, say it. Say it, say it, say it. I believe what it says about me. In the name of Jesus. The word of God endures forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus mighty name. Amen and amen. Amen, amen. Amen. I'm excited about this week. I believe that this week we are going to pray like we have never prayed before. Last uh, yesterday, was that yesterday? Yep. Yes. Yep. We were in the book of Matthew chapter number 26. If you'll open your Bible to the book of Matthew chapter number 26. Amen. Amen. Today I want to complete the mysteries that we started on Sunday. And then starting tomorrow we can start to answer some pivotal questions about prayer. How many of you say, I want to learn something I didn't know about prayer? Let me see your hand. Now raise that hand and say, Lord, teach me, Lord, teach me how to pray. Lord, teach me how to pray. I cannot hear you. Come on, say, Lord, teach me how to pray. In the name of Jesus. Prayer is something that each and every believer needs to know how to do. Many people are born again. And we find ourselves in church and we find church people pray. And so we just learn by, I don't know, osmosis, by, by association. So that is why our prayer lives are not effective because no one taught us how to pray. Are we together, somebody? But everything needs to be taught. However, in as much as I try to teach you how to pray this week, prayer is not just taught, prayer is also caught. Hello? Hello? That you must take yourself to a place where you begin to get a personal revelation on what prayer is. So Matthew chapter number 26. Yesterday we began by reading from verse number 36. And we said that Jesus went up to the mountain of Gethsemane to pray. He told his disciples to sit while he goes yonder to pray. So number one, we say that prayer is personal. That you as an individual, it is an onus on you as a person to pray. Nothing happens if you don't pray. Turn to your neighbor, say, nothing happens if you don't pray. 
Tell them it is easy for nothing to happen. Just don't pray. Keep quiet. Nothing will happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But if you want to see some change in your lives, you have to begin to pray. Number two, we said prayer is communal. That you must find two, three people you can agree with. But if you can't find those two or three, agree within yourself, body, soul, and spirit. Amen. Agree within yourself. Amos 3.3 3 says how can two walk together unless they agree There Amos must be an agreement How many people have begun to agree within yourself You have told your body, you have commanded your soul and your spirit to line up Let me see your hands Are you here? Praise the Lord. Number three, we said prayer is expressional. That you cannot pray what is on the inside without expressing it out. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Bible says that out of the overflow of the belly, the mouth begins to speak. There must be something boiling on the outs in the inside if something will come out from there. Number four, we said prayer is occupational. That you only pray according to your assignment. Jeremiah did not pray like Daniel. Because Jeremiah was a weeping prophet. But, but Daniel was a political prophet. With their politique. Praise the Lord. Are we together? I'm just giving you a recap so that we go deep tonight. Are you ready? That you will never learn or you will never pray beyond how you discover the purpose of your life. The weight that Jesus had on his shoulders was not the weight of flesh, it was the weight of assignment. And we say that we have a generational assignment. How do you feel when you drive around Burundi and you see young men and young women just walking around and wasting their lives? Is there anything on the inside of you that begins to pray for them? Hello? Hello? Because you can only pray according to your assignment. Number five, we said prayer is progressional. Hello. Hello. We learned from the verse number 30. Uh, if you go to your Bibles, we, we said that in verse number 36, Jesus said, let us go yonder. But in verse number 39, he says, let's go a little further. That in your spirit there must be a, de a, a desire to go from yonder to a little father. Yesterday's prayer cannot sustain you today. Let me say that again. Yesterday's prayer cannot sustain you today. Because yesterday's prayer was according to yesterday's instruction. For example, 
God told Abraham to sacrifice his son. But when he began to go up the mountain, when he reached the top of his mountain, he was following God's last instruction. But Abraham had to catch the now instruction. Are you here, because in the middle of your assignment, God will change instructions. If Abraham had killed his son, he would have obeyed God's instruction. But he will have disobeyed God's now instruction. I don't know who I'm talking to here. I've not yet begun to preach. I'm trying to lay a foundation. Luke chapter number 4 says, Man shall live not by bread alone that bread is not food it is the word of God but he shall live by every word mark the next word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. Proceedeth is present tense participle. It is it begins now. It proceedeth now from the mouth of God. Not the word that proceeded from the word of God. But the word that proceeded from the word of God. So, so prayer is about catching the now instruction. I, I don't know who I'm talking to here. You see, when you begin to pray, you must, and this is where we are going today, you must realize that you are not praying to tell God anything. You are praying to hear what God is saying to you today. And that's where we are going today. So number six, are you, are you people here? Are we there? Uh, before we go to that one, let's go to number six, which says prayer is relational. Let's, let's, let's read our Bibles. Verse 39, it says, He went a little farther. He fell on his face and he prayed saying, Oh, my father! He fell on his face and said, Oh, my father. Because he knew that the pain he was going through might not be God orchestrated, but it is definitely God accepted. Uh, let me say it again. He knew that what he was going through may not be God orchestrated, but it was definitely God accepted. If you are so even though he didn't want what was about to happen, he still had sense enough to say, Oh my father. Prayer begins when your eyes are open to who your father is. No prayer is answered where there is no relationship with your father. Many people in church pray, but they are praying to all oh God and not all oh my father. 
Imana, Imana. Ariko niwa menye kuimana ni data. Prayer is supposed to develop a relationship with your father. Who am I talking to here today? The moment you begin to look at God as Father, it changes the dimensions of prayer. You will know that one, he is not mad at you. You are his son. The assignment of Jesus was to make the sons of of man become the sons of God. He who was the son of God became the son of man that me who is just a son of man may become the son of God. The effectiveness of your prayer is in your sonship. Whose son are you? When you're praying for healing in your body, do you know who your father is? He is a doctor of doctors. He is a nurse of nurses. In Hebrews chapter number 4, he says that his word is surgery. It divides spirit and soul. There is no hospital in this nation or anywhere in the world that can separate the spirit and the soul. It is only the word of God. The the Bible also says that by the power that resides in us we become like God by faith by the operation of God. Are you people hearing what I'm saying? But if you do not know him as father and only know him as God you will think you are praying to get help. We do not pray to get help. We pray to access help. Because help is our right. As a son in the kingdom. When your father is the president of this country. There are some battles you don't fight. Because the battle belongs to your father. I don't know who I'm talking to here today. That may our church begin to see him not just as God but as father. That word father means caretaker. You, you didn't hear me. The word father means caretaker. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come from? My help is in the name of the Lord. My name, my help is in the Father God that I don't know what your need is. Your mind must accommodate God as a father. In that need that you have. So, when I am praying for rent, I don't say, God, they are chasing me out tonight. Don't you see, God, what do I do? I say, Father, you need a house to stay in. You, you, you get it tomorrow. I say, Father, what is our next residence? I say, Father, where do we go from here? Because as God Father, every shift is for a lift. Yeah. 
The devil has desire to shift you. Don't bind the shift. Release your hands and get ready for the lift. When I fall sick, I know who is supposed to take care of the bills. This is what he says. If you who are wicked know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your heavenly father Data womichuru. What father? Athli? Bega nuwe data womisi. Nyakabiga. Yabafia munyakabiga. Which father? Ni ni data. Your heavenly father. Data womichuru. That's why the devil doesn't want you to pray. Ni chuki to masatana da kumba kusenga. Because when you pray, kuki you sense it. You are accessing heavenly help down here. Oh no. Kuki kure mera kandi ufata ugi mfasha ni fa munichurunga. Who am I talking to tonight? Lift your voice, say, Oh my father. Kusa ichwe ya ufuguti. I love you, my father. Data ndagu kunda. Matthew chapter number six. Matayo milongibiri. His disciples, six, G, six yeah. Jesus' his disciples look at him. They see how he effective his life is. Listen, listen to me, people. Everything Jesus prayed happened. Every, there is no where in the Bible it says, and then it refused to happen. His disciples looked at him. And this is what they told him. They said, Jesus, but yes, teach us how to pray. Like John the Baptist taught his disciples. Jesus, there is something about the way you 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 pray. Yes, we we also pray, but the way you pray. Then in verse nine he says, "Pray like this." Our Father, Data. Oh, you missed it. Our Father, Data. Have you picked it? That what he wanted them to know if you're is the power of any prayer hey. is in the father figure of that prayer. Because the father figure is the source of the results. I'm, I'm getting excited here. I'm trying to hold myself. I'm getting excited. When your child, when Joshua comes to you and asks you for something, his confidence is in you being his father. Do you understand what I'm saying? Sometimes he doesn't even think about, he knows as long as daddy is here, everything is sorted. So, his source is not in your wallet. He doesn't know how much you have. His source is in the father figure he sees. If you catch this one, your life will never be the same again. Don't force God to do anything. Don't try to twist his arm to do something. The Bible says, therefore, come boldly. Uh, uh, before the throne room of your father that you might receive grace to help you in time of need. That boldness is in knowing who your father is. That's number one. Can we go further? Number two. 
it is not in just knowing who your father is it's in knowing where your father is that is why Jesus says our father who is in heaven he is the God of the heavens. Because in life, it is the heavens that govern the earth. Oof. Are you people here? Everything on earth is governed by the heavens. Uh -huh. And he is my father in heaven. And then he says this. You see, when you are praying, you have to know, you know, I'm a bit computer literate. You have to know where you're downloading from. Uh, you must know your vuge, download server. Are we there? Some of you are praying with your eyes on some muzungo. Or your mother, or your father, or your cousin in the US. Or your, or your boyfriend in Canada. So when it doesn't help, you run back to God and say, but God, I even fasted for 40 days and nothing has happened. It's because Consciously or unconsciously. Whenever we pray, we know where the answer is going to come from. Lord, I need a promotion. Man, and can a promotion with your mind on your boss. Promotion does not come from the east. Or from the West, the Bible says. Where does promotion come from? Where does promotion come from? It comes from the Lord. Ask your neighbor, who is your father? Romans chapter number 8 says this. How many of you are picking something? Are you here? Come on, shake yourself. Say, I know who my father is. Come on, shake yourself. Say, I know who my father is. Romans chapter number 8 says something powerful. I have to read that one. In verse number 14, he says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, what are they? They are the sons of God. If you are a son, then you are a co-heir. Then everything that is God's is yours. So that means I, I have everything. That changes how I pray. So I am not praying for money I don't have. I am telling heaven it is time for this amount of money to manifest for this assignment. So instead of asking, I declare the manifestation of what is already mine. If, if, if Ephesians 1 and 3 says, Ah, beloved, you have already been blessed with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places. The spiritual blessings are what manifest the earthly blessings. So we are not praying from the earth to heaven. We are praying from the heaven to the earth. I wish I had time. 
No, he continues, in, he continues in Ephesians and he says, We are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Are you people here with me? So that means if the riches are in heavenly places, and that is where I am seated. <laughs> Let me give you a commercial break to think about that. Can I use you? Get this chair and sit up in the heavenly place. Run, run, run quickly. Like move, move. Heavenly is very far. It's not here. Hello? Hello? Can we learn something here? Talk to me. Can we learn something? Ephesians chapter number one. And then we go back to Romans chapter number 8. Anybody picking something here? Ephesians 1 chapter 3 says, Blessed be the God of our Father, Lord Jesus Christ, who has already blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Are you there? And then chapter number 2, verse number 6, he says, He has raised us up together and he has made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So everything we need is where? Talk to me, people. Where is it? Where is it? It's in the heavenly places. And where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? And where are we? Plot number 24. And where are we? And where are we? Plot number 24. Where are we? Plot number 24. We are where? Where so there is a man in the heavenly places and there is a man on the earthly places. But these two are the same man. He is the man of the spirit. He is the man of the flesh. So when you are praying you are telling your brother in the spirit to use western union to the brother down here or not? Are you people with me? I don't know who I'm helping here. So the man here has no job worrying. Why don't you worry? Because you have a brother who is seated in the thing itself. Why is he seated there? Because he is a son of God. Anybody here? So why do we pray, Lord, bless me? Hopelessly. Lord bless me. Oh Lord, I am dying. Oh Lord, don't you care how much this is costing me? It's because we have not yet realized that our Father has elevated our position. Ephesians are saying He has raised us up together with Christ. Together with Christ. And he has made us to sit. Are you ready for this one? Noel, well, run here quickly. No he, way, says, no he has raised us with Christ and he has made us to sit. Stand up. He has not told us to sit. <laughs> he has made us to sit. I don't know who I'm talking to. And then he says, we are not seated on the throne. We, he has made us to sit in Christ Jesus. 
Christ Jesus. Let him sit on you. Let him, him sit on you. Let him sit on you. No, 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 the other way around. The other way around. Let you, yeah, he sit on him. Yes, okay. let him sit on you. You know, you know, you know, so, he has raised you with him. He has forced you to sit with him in Christ Jesus. So that even if your unbelief wants you to take away, take you away from there, you cannot move because you have been planted in Christ Jesus. When I learned these things, my prayer life shifted. I stopped asking. I started giving thanks. I don't know who I'm talking to here. So, Pastor Joshua, if you're sick in your body, don't you say, God, heal me? This is what I do. I must realize where I am. If it is possible for me to be in Christ and still be with malaria, are there people who are ready for higher living? Are you here? Higher living? Higher living? Because I know it is impossible for that to happen to my spirit man. I command my physical man to line up with my spiritual man. So I am not asking for healing. I am declaring that I am the healed of the Lord. Let's clap for them. Please How many people are picking something? Are you here? You're going to change the way you pray. Prayer is relational. Go, go back to Romans 8. We have a few minutes. I thought I would share with you the, the second one, but that's okay. We have enough. We, 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 still, we are still here for a whole week. Romans 8, are you being blessed, somebody? Those who are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Verse 14. Verse number 15. Oh, I love verse that. Is there anybody who loves their Bible? Do you love the Word of God? My desire is to raise a generation that goes back to the word of God. Let me say this. Not everything you watch on TBN is true. But everything you read here is true. I hope I helped somebody. Verse 15. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. I wish somebody can scream. But you have received the spirit of adoption. Uh, whereby we cry Abba Father you have not received the spirit of bondage to fear let me tell you every prayer do you know that most of the prayers we say are not out of faith but out of fear do you know that? Do you know that some of the people who pray most are because they are the most fearful and not necessarily those with most faith? How many people understand what I'm saying? Do you understand me? If you want your prayer not to work, there's one medicine. Throw in some fear. Reka, iyo ushaka ko ukusenga kwa ukuda kora, 
reka nagwe umuti worosha ivyo bintu but he has not given us the spirit of bondage again to fear tell your neighbor no more fear no more fear what if i pray from my child and he doesn't get healed don't pray don't pray don't pray do you understand what I'm saying? Uh -huh. In your mind you're saying. What if I pray for them and they, they don't get healed? Don't, don't pray. Don't pray. What, what, <laughs> if, what if I fast and things don't happen? Don't pray. Don't fast. Just go and eat. Go, go to Beril and have some coffee. Hallelujah. He has not given us the spirit of bondage and fear. Then he says, but he has given us the spirit of adoption. I love you guys. Listen. We have been adopted with all our problems. We have been adopted with all our past failures. Everything that he adopted you the way you are. Ephesians 1 says, you did not choose me, I chose you. He said, we were chosen before the foundation of it. We were chosen not because of our performance, but because of his love and mercy. To adopt means is that you have become mine as if you were really mine. And you are now going to enjoy the same rights that all my biological children enjoy. So, I don't pray like an orphan. I pray like an adopted child. I'm taking you somewhere. I'm taking you somewhere. I'm taking you somewhere. But an adopted child. Do you have some adopted children? They never forget where they came from. And they are always grateful for where they are. Their prayers are always, oh, thank you, mommy. You give them a dress, they say, thank you, mommy. Because they know you didn't have to do it. You didn't have to do it. Turn to your neighbor and say, where, where? Turn to your neighbor and say, where, where? Tell them God didn't have to bless you. But he blessed you anyway. Because you're now his adopted child. And he says by the spirit of adoption we cry out Abba Father. You see even Jesus on his on the cross, on the time of greatest affliction, he still remembered the name. He said, my father, my father. Prayer is relational. Is there anybody going to pray different this week? Talk to me, talk to me. Are you going to pray this week differently? It's because prayer is relational. Let me tell you what happens when you start to pray relational prayers. Luke uh, uh, chapter number 22. Don't worry, we're about to go. Luke 22. This is the same story of Jesus in the garden. But Luke says something here. 
In verse 42 he says Jesus said Father if you are willing Remove this cup Nevertheless not my will but your will be done And Then check out what happens in 43 And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven strengthening him <laughs> Did you, did, did you pick it? When you start to pray relational prayers, you release the angelic ministry. Because the angels are ministering spirits to the sons. I don't know who I'm talking to here. They don't work for strangers. They work for sons. When the sons cry, the angels are released. After 40 days of prayer and fasting, the Bible says, and then angels were sent to Jesus to minister to him. How many of you are ready to see some angels in your house? One, two, three. May it happen to you in the name of four, five, six. May the angels be released to the sons and the daughters of God. Did you receive it? Come on, don't just be excited about cars. Are you excited about angels? Come on, say angels are on my case in Jesus' name. Come on, say angels are on my case in Jesus' name. We have five minutes left. But there's one thing, you know, if I stay long on this, I will not be able to share, because I wanted to share about the... Uh, I took some time in the corporate world. You'll forgive me. When you are analyzing a problem, a problem, my sister here knows because you work in the corporate world. When you're analyzing a problem, there's what they call a SWOT analysis. Yes? Okay, hallelujah. Your, your strength, weakness, opportunities, and your threats. Prayer is a mystery. You must calculate that mystery for it to work for you. Hello? So there's what we call the five W's and H. What, where, who, why, when, and how. This week, how many people are ready to go deep? Are you here, somebody? This week, we are going to ask ourselves, what are the five W's and H of prayer? What, what, what is this thing called prayer? Why do we pray? How do we pray? When do we pray? Where do we pray? By the time we answer those five and H, you'll be at a whole different level in Jesus' name. But in these five minutes left, allow me to share one scripture. Is that okay? Just, I beg you by the mercy of God. Can we go? Matthew chapter number six. Matayo Igiche Chamukaga. Five Ch minutes. As soon as they are over, we go home. And that is my seventh point. That prayer is revelational. Matthew chapter number six. Matayo Gatandatu, Igiche Chagatandatu. Verse. Number six, we read seven, yes, uh, but when you pray, don't use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think they shall be heard, for they are much speaking. But verse number eight says, 
Be not ye therefore like unto them. <laughs> For your father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask him. Uh oh. Uh huh. Uh-oh. I have four minutes now. Your father knows what you have need of. If you I'm sorry. Before <laughs> you ask him. So that means this one changed my head. Prayer is not informational. It's not, it's not informational. Prayer is revelational. Mm. Prayer is not really me talking to God as much as it is God talking to me. I am not breaking news to God when I pray. Uh -uh. I am receiving the latest news when I pray. Mm. So prayer is not me trying to tell God something he doesn't know. It is him telling me something I don't know. So the most important part of prayer is not the mouth, it is the ears. When I know what he knows, then I know what I don't know. <laughs> so when we come to pray don't think you are telling him that he doesn't know that you're being chased out of the house before you open your mouth know that he knows that will change what you will say uh -huh. So you will not tell him Lord help me You will tell him Lord As you know <laughs> Kuko Uzi. Woo! Lord As you know How many people are here right uh, now are here? Here? So prayer Gusenga. Is not about upload It's about download Gusenga. So what does that mean? The more I pray, the more I download. The more I talk to God, the more He talks to me. One minute. When I'm praying, Lord, help me pay these bills. I don't know where this money is going to come. In the middle of every sentence, God talks to me. Listen to me. Umvirizi. So the man who began by saying, Lord, please supply my needs. Immediately he says, I will supply. All of your needs if you're, we're according of your to your riches in glory. So then, immediately, my prayer changes. So I start to say, Lord, I thank you for my needs are supplied according to your riches in glory. But Lord, I don't know when. I don't know how. Then he says, Faith is now. 
If you believe, all things are possible. So then I begin to pray. I said, Lord, I thank you. Because now, my needs are supplied according to your riches in glory. Then I said, God, how shall it be? And he says to me, with man it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. I take it deeper, I say, God. But look at me. Oh. I have no, no, we call it eternity. I have no foundation. I have nobody to help me. And then he talks back to me. I, I went together. The more I pray, I move from information to revelation. The highest form of prayer is not intercession. It's thanksgiving. Because you cannot thank God for what he has not done. By the time you say thank you, it's because your spirit has realized that God has already answered. Matthew 26 Jesus began by saying Lord let this cup pass that was a level of information Jesus thought God didn't know that this cup was over his head he didn't know that the cup was over his head so he said my father let this cup go God must have spoken at that point. And that is why he switched his prayer. Then he said, ah, 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 forget what I say. Ah, forget, forget. Ah, Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Between the cup passing and the will, there must have been revelation. After tonight, I can go back home. <laughs> then, he continued. then he continued. Then he said, Lord, my father, if I must drink of this cup, where did he get that one from? Where did the drinking come from? Talk to me, where did the drinking come from? Was it written in the garden? No! He downloaded it from heaven. While he was saying, let your will be done, God showed him a cup. <laughs> he showed him an I think he must fe, he must have fed an angel. So Jesus saw a picture of someone drinking. He said, Okay, 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 God, okay. Kumbure, kumbure, okay, 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 okay. If I must drink of this cup, let your will be done. Are, are you there? So he moved from what he knew. To what he didn't know. Don't stop praying until what you know has been taken over by what you don't know. Don't stop praying until your words are not there anymore. <laughs> it's now his words. That wasn't the end. He went back to his disciples. He said, You're still sleeping. Get up now. Let us go. He makes a classic statement. He says, He says, Arise. For the hour has come. So you don't stop praying. Until you 
get the revelation of the timing of God. Did I talk to anybody here? Tomorrow, we are taking it deeper. How many of you say I'm coming back tomorrow? I'm coming back to lunch. I'm, I'm coming back. So this is your homework today. When you go back home, will you do this homework? Get at least one hour. The reason why we pray long is not because we have a lot to say. It's because we have a lot to know. Help me. Did you hear me? The length of prayer, the purpose of the length of prayer is to move you from unbelief to faith. So the more you don't know, the longer you pray. Are you here, Shabbat? They asked Jesus, but we also cast the demon. How come he refused to go? What did he say? He says, by the side, you're praying, you're playing in the wrong field. That is not your league. He says this kind can only go by prayer and fasting. So the purpose of prayer and fasting is not to talk to God and tell him things. It's for us to know things that only men who pray and fast know. I said something powerful right there. After these 40 days I prophesy. You, you are going to know things that everyone around you can't even understand. May the Lord give you his divine revelation. I am praying. May he release upon you the spirit of knowledge. Of understanding. And of divine wisdom. The glory is the Lord's. Give him praise in the house of the Lord. I said give him praise in the house of the Lord. I said give him praise in the house of the Lord. I said give him praise in the house of the Lord. I said give him praise in the house of the Lord. The Bible says in the book of 1 Kings chapter number 6. There was, a, there was a prophet who had a servant. The servant told the prophet, We are dead. Second Kings chapter 6. He said, We are dead. They have surrounded us. What do you think the servant was praying to God? Bega, we, uh, we, what do you think the servant was praying to God? He must have been saying, I break the spirits that are around us. I arrest all the demons in this world. Every generational curse around us, I'll break it in the name of Jesus. The prophet said, uh -uh. Uh -huh. Wait a minute. Father, open his eyes. <laughs> now, what do you see? When he received revelation, he saw chariots of fire with angels on them. Yabonye mikogote yumuriro iri kwa bamaraika. Without revelation all you see is demons. With revelation you see angels. 
hatari yerekwa ubona abadaimoni ariko hari yerekwa ry'Imana ubona abamaraika are you hearing what I'm saying? I have got it, man. He saw angels surrounding him. Jesus, yes, we don't have enough bread. Even if we have, we save, all of us save for one year, we can't buy enough bread for all these people. But the verse before that says, Jesus asked his disciples while he knew what he was going to do. So he asked them to release their unbelief. They saw the need. Jesus saw the supply. If I was Jesus at that time, Without revelation, this is how I would pray. Every spirit of lack in this area, I break your power. In Jesus name. Your spirit upon Africa that causes us not to have enough bread and fish, I break you in the name of Jesus. Every stronghold in Yakabiga, I pull you down in Jesus. Ah, now I command, let them. Let there be bread. Let there be bread. Let there be bread. Anointed prayer, but ignorant prayer. What did Jesus do? He got what was not enough. And he pointed it to the heavenly places. Did he ask? Did he ask? These are his words. Father. Data. Does that word mean something to you now? Father. Data. I thank you. Because you always hear me. When I pray. When did he pray? <laughs> Come back tomorrow. We are picking it up from there. <laughs> give Jesus a big hand of praise. Come on, give him praise. Stand, Stand up on your feet. feet and give him praise. Come on, give him praise, everybody. Look to your father, everybody. Come on. Look to your father. Now begin to thank him today. Thank you for my life. Thank you for my health. Thank you for my finance. Thank you for my farm. Are you tired? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Come on, come on. Thank him, thank him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, 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 thank you. Increase is man. Uh, 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 come on, come on. Thank you, thank you. Come on, come on, thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands in the presence of God. I declare over you two things tonight. May the Lord be your father. May you begin to see him as father. And may the eyes of your understanding be open to receive divine revelation. You will never pray the same again in the name of Jesus. From today, I command results. Results to come out of your prayers. Now, if you believe you are receiving it tonight, I want you to shout the name of Jesus on top of your voice as a sign that you have received. 
Come on, shout Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ushikaneri mana, ejo dushke kare, ejo dushke kare, kubwa ngo dutangure kare, mani baheza gire. Kandi tuzo watu ringano kumusi wakane, tuzo